We're going to start with a story of courage from a remarkable young woman. Poppy is 18 and was sexually abused as a child by her grandfather. He was eventually convicted of her rape and jailed for 13 years. But now Poppy's waived her right to anonymity to try to help other victims of sexual abuse by talking about her experience. New analysis for the BBC by the Centre of Expertise on Child Sexual Abuse reveals that in the last year, police forces in England and Wales recorded over 100,000 sexual offences against children. That's a 57% increase in six years. Experts say the rise is largely due to greater awareness, but most abuse remains hidden. Our social affairs editor, Alison Holt, has Poppy's story. Like when I get in the plane, it'll be probably weird and then going up and up and up. A few words with her dad on the phone and with her mum watching. This is a big day for Poppy just before her 18th birthday. She's doing her first skydive to raise money for a charity that helped her cope with the sexual abuse that devastated her early life. She's also trying to change attitudes. Take away that shame. Why should we be hidden? It's a crime if you put it black and white and you're a victim of that crime. It's as simple as that. She's set aside her legal right to remain anonymous. She hopes by speaking to me so openly, it will make it easier for abuse survivors to get support. I think if people can see a face behind something so taboo, it makes it more relatable. I am like any other person probably going through it and I think people, one thing I suppose survivors are very good at and I was very good at was hiding that and acting like nothing was wrong. People didn't see it in me. Abuse can put betrayal at the heart of a home. Poppy was sexually abused by her paternal grandfather, John. She called him Dan Dan. It started when she was a toddler. I thought it happened to everyone. I thought grandparents did that to their grandchildren. This is Poppy on a trip to Legoland, aged five. She'd just tried to tell her parents about the abuse. They thought she'd accidentally seen her grandfather in the shower, so spoke to him about that. The abuse did stop, but Poppy says over the following years, she was eaten alive with guilt and anxiety. I was thinking, I'm that bad. I'm really that bad. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be here. I don't deserve anything. One day when she was 11, she was being physically sick. Her mum, Miranda, suggested a walk. I just said to her, babe, has something awful happened to you? And she said, you know it has, mum. And I was like... <sighs> Sorry. It's all right. What do you mean? And she said, do you remember that day we went to Legoland and you spoke to Dan Dan? She said, it wasn't just naked, Mum. And, and I just, just the look on her face that it all, I just, I just knew. I think I was so terrified telling my mum that she'd turn around and be like, you're lying or that's disgusting or yeah, just think I was a horrible person for it as well, as I had done. And what was her reaction? It was just an immediate, we're, we're going to get through this. For her dad, David, there was the distress of knowing his father was the abuser. He, on one hand, was abusing our daughter, and then five minutes later, he was having a cup of tea with us. I then felt, who is this man? But then equally, as a child, I'd grown up and had many, many happy, happy memories. So there was a real, real conflict um, going on in my mind. David reported his father to the police. John was later convicted of raping Poppy and jailed for 13 and a half years. He died in prison last November. What would you say to those who say, it couldn't happen in my family? I said that. We said that. It happens with people who generally you know, generally you love. It can happen under your nose. 
Now, through her skydive, Poppy is raising money for a helpline to support abuse survivors whilst they wait for counselling. It can take months to get that help, but the family says it was vital for them. Above all, Poppy wants survivors to know someone will listen. Take that jump. Easy for me to say I've taken that jump. I'm living the life I live now. I can't promise that you'll be believed by everyone, but I can promise that there is someone that will believe you and there is a way through this. Well, Poppy, who you saw there in that report, is an ambassador for Family Matters and is with me now. Thank you so much for talking to us, Poppy. Mm -hmm. now, as a victim of a sexual crime, you do have the legal right uh, to remain anonymous. Uh, why did you choose to waive that and speak out? I think, yes, it's an incredibly serious crime, but it's so scary and we're dealing with children. And I was a child who could barely speak myself and I think for me, at the age of three or four, at the age of 11 when I spoke out to her, to be able to look at someone and go, she's a normal person that's a normal child is like me it doesn't have to be so scary um yeah it doesn't it doesn't you it, it's part like a lot of people go through it um as a statistic as the statistics show and you deserve the right to to speak about it and get the help that you deserve so you said you spoke out as young as 11 mm -hmm. um how difficult did you find it to tell someone what was happening to you it was incredibly difficult because I believed it was my fault um, and to be honest it kind of came I spoke out about it through kind of not through it directly and what was happening to me but just the fact that I felt like such a horrible person um, my anxiety and my guilt and thing had kind of skyrocketed and it came to the point where it was unbearable I didn't want to be here anymore and that's more how it came out but I genuinely thought that it was my fault and it's not something I wanted to speak about necessarily I just needed help I mean, that's heartbreaking to hear. And it means that your parents' reaction to what you were telling them must have been very important to you then. Mm. How did they react? Uh, it, it's so scary because you don't know how anyone's going to react. And unfortunately, it's become an incredibly common thing where parents and people in your family or around you don't believe you. So just, I mean, they didn't know what to do or how to help me, but just them believing me was so vital in gaining the support and just is just relieving relieving the pressure from what from what I was holding essentially and I suppose the other thing that made it very complicated was that it was your grandfather another member of your own family mm. yeah that and unfortunately that's incredibly common um, that it's someone within the family and I'm at the age of four felt responsible for him. I created an incredibly strong relationship with him to try and cover up what was going on and that's something I learned through counselling afterwards. But you do have an, a great amount of responsibility on your shoulders. You don't want to break that family apart and that's a, a massive reason why people don't say anything. But now I've spoken out about it. I, yes, I've lost a lot of family, but I have now created a unit around me that I know love and believe in me. Mm. And that is so much more important than holding together a family that mm. doesn't love me as they should. Such a burden to put on young shoulders though. And on top of trying to process all that, you had a court process to go through as well. Mm. I mean, the court process took nearly two years um, to actually go through and to the point where I actually could go to court. And that's a very long time. So I was 11 when I spoke out and 13 and so much changes in that time. Um, and yeah, I was 13 when I went to court. I mean, for me, I knew I wasn't lying. And I think being so young, the naivety kind of helped me a little bit because I was like, well, I haven't lied, so it's, it's got to go through, it should be fine. Um, but yeah, the, the court process is incredibly heavy. You have to stay mm -hmm. quiet, you can't say anything, which I suppose adds to the shame. And it's what makes you speaking out so important, isn't it? What would you say to someone who may be in a similar situation and struggling to tell anyone? It's so easy for me to sit here as someone who's gone through it and had the help to say speak out. Um, and everyone's situations are so different. But as I said previously, 
the responsibility isn't yours. None of this is your fault. And if the family's gonna fall apart because of something, that is their fault, that is not your fault if you want to speak out or need to speak out. Um, you don't have to always speak to the police straight away. You can gain that support other ways. You can gain that counselling and take those step, baby steps of speaking to the police if that's what's needed and that's what you feel is necessary. But someone will believe you and that's essentially what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to change things so that it is an open conversation and people aren't so scared of it because essentially you're a victim of a crime. Mm -hmm. And by holding this shame up, you're allowing perpetrators to hide behind that door. Oh, Poppy, we're incredibly grateful and humbled that you've chosen to share your story. Thank, Thank you for you. your courage. Thank you. Thank you. And if you've been affected by child sexual abuse, you can find details of organisations offering information and support. Uh, find those at bbc.co.uk forward slash action line.